Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying this month, everybody say this month, shall be your beginning. If my knee felt better, I'd shout right there. I don't want the deacons to have to come and pick me up. This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, Oh, on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. You may be seated. God, we give you praise and glory. We thank you. We honor you. And we pray now, God, that you would just speak for a moment to your children. You know what they need to hear. Father, let your spirit, as it has done in worship, direct us now in the listening and the proclamation of your word. I pray for ears, not physical ears necessarily, God, but spiritual ears. Where the scripture tells us, those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So God, tune our hearts, our spirits to you so that we can hear what it is you are saying to us. And Father, from this day forward, we pray for your mighty Holy Spirit to lead in God and direct our thoughts, direct our path so that this word will be transformative and changing in our lives. Don't ever let us forget it in the name of Jesus. But Father, I pray that it would put righteousness in our hearts and right steps and right living in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and glory. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. The family that honors God. Just for a little while, just for about five, ten minutes, the family that honors God. Say that with me, the family that honors God. Brothers and sisters, we are here this morning and we are here on the first Sunday, January 2024. We're here as individuals, we're here collectively as families, we're here in connection to one another as church family. All family has been designed by God. It is a God thought. It is a God idea. Husband and wife would get together and procreate and it would be family. God instituted family. I'll say that to the other side since. God instituted family. It is a God thing. It is not man-made, it is not a man-designed, it is a God thing, it is God-made family. From Adam and Eve, God instituted family. Family is to be a divine institution, not just a physical institution, it is a divine institution under a divine covenant. Y'all with me? You are under a divine covenant. That's what the marriage institution was supposed to be. And I know I got kids, so I have to be careful. When, when I'm trying to rephrase this so that all our children, you won't have to get home and have to go to the Google and help them to understand. Mama, what did, what did Pastor Bailey say? Virginity and the institution of husband and wife getting together for the first time was to have something break. When it broke, it was blood, and it was a divine covenant. Since the beginning of time, the covenant 
between husband and wife or in a relationship was to be the most divine thing that God instituted on the earth. Before you check me, before there ever was a church, before Jesus ever hung on the cross, there was a family in place. Families are a microcosm of the church. If you know how to live right in your family, you have no problem living right in the church. Amen, somebody. That's why we get things all chaotic and haywire because people don't conduct themselves in their unit and then when they get to the church, they still act in crazy. I'm sorry, we got guests this morning. So this morning is to talk to you about this divine covenant exodus is, you remember Bible students, about the exiting of the children of Israel from captivity in Egypt. If you don't shout over anything else this morning, shout over what we're about to do because it is a supreme God with all authority in heaven and in earth saying, I don't care what's holding you. I don't care who's holding you. I got all the power to deliver you out of your situation. Can I get about three people? Did, did you hear what I said? I don't care who's holding you. I don't care what institution is trying to hold you. In God's timing, you will be delivered. Stop talking about I'm under generational curse. Oh, that's just the way things are. Oh, it's in my DNA. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, he broke curses. He, he broke DNA. He, he, you under a new covenant with him. And he is a deliverer. Say that with me. Number one, he is a deliverer. So this morning, whatever you're going through and whatever you've been through in 2023, if it held you captive, you ought, to tell, you ought to tell somebody and tell the Lord, I'm believing in you that you're breaking anything that held me back in 2023. I'm free in 2024. Can I get about three people? Yeah, I'm, I'm, just declare that. Say, I'm free. I'm free. The Bible tells me who the sun sets free. It's shown up free. Not just free indeed, but shown up. Like, like our grandmothers and our grandfathers used to say, they shown up free. So he is a deliverer. So the exiting from this tyrannical Pharaoh who said, I'm not going to let him go, had to one day bow. <sighs> did did y'all hear what, what the Holy Spirit said? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue gonna confess. What? That Jesus is Lord. And if God said let him go, you got to be let go. And can I just go ahead and decree and declare to you this morning that you are free. Lord have mercy. Let me say something. This is not in, in let me just tell y'all something. Can, can I tell you something? This, this on me, this ain't on you. Some people get comfortable in their bondage. Tell your neighbor, say, don't get comfortable in your bondage. You hear it from the Egyptians from time to time. Let us go back to Egypt. We had it better in Egypt. Don't look back. Don't turn into a pillar of assault this morning because you are so caught up in the past that you are lusting after the past and you're craving for the past that you miss the thing that God wants to do for you in the future. Amen, somebody? So the covenant of this divine institution of marriage, before there ever was the institution of the church, Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Before Jesus made that statement in his, in his carnate, he was already working to free us from whatever would hold us. And this, when he starts talking about it, he says, Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, come out, tell somebody, come out of Egypt. Don't get comfortable in Egypt. Egypt ain't made for, I'll talk to the other side. You ain't made for Egypt. 
I wish I had time, I'll break that down. You ain't made for toxicity. You're not made for addictions. Can I get a witness in the house? You're not made for toxicity or addictions or that person that you just can't get enough of and they're just as toxic as they can be so it makes you feel like, oh, the only thing I can do is live in an area of toxicity. Tell the devil is a lie. Egypt, don't get comfortable in it because God says this will be their beginning months. Tell them somebody, say this is new beginnings for you. I got to hurry, but listen. On Monday night or Sunday night, Monday, I said to you, we're going to have to have an increased antenna or an increased sensitivity to the spirit of discernment because the things that we're seeing in our society, the things that are coming our way, we need to have divine sensitivity to things changing, to have the spirit of discernment because things will shift in your life. And if you are not aware of the shift, you will miss God. You will continue to live in bondage when things have already shifted. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't want to miss my shift. I don't want to, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss it. Because when, when Jesus, well, when the Holy Spirit, when God says to Moses and to Aaron that, that this month is your beginning month, they are still in bondage. Don't miss that. He says, new things are happening. He says, from this time on, it'll be the first month of the year to you, and speak to all the congregation, saying, on the 10th month of this year, or on the 10th month, or the 10th day, the 10th month, that every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. God was already setting up the divine institution of Passover. Passover for the children of Israel. When you read down verse 7, he tells them to go out, take this lamb, kill it, take hyssop, which is a tree sort of similar to this, and take the blood and wipe it over the doorposts. Think about it. Up one side, across, down the other. Dip it in the blood. Take the hyssop and paint it red, the color of the lamb's blood. Up and down. Make sure you get it on the doorposts, on the lintels, across the top and down the sides. He says to be sure that when destruction comes and everybody else Anybody else that don't have the sign of the blood because I'm going to send somebody angelic forces that if they don't see the blood calamity is on the way. That's why it's important for us to apply the blood. That's why when you hear people say, oh, I plead the blood. I, I plead the blood of Jesus. All they're doing is saying, God, see the blood. Can I get about three people? All he is saying, all, all we are saying is, God, we're under the covenant of your son's blood. And if you see the blood, Satan got to step back. When, 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 you, when, you, when you keep reading verse chapter 12, it, it just tells us that Satan can't go past the blood. 
I don't care what America does. I don't care what Republicans or Democrats do. You and I, when we got saved, got under the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah. Father, forgive me of my... In, in the spiritual realm, all, all, they, all they see is blood. They, they look at you, don't, don't think they see you. That They see the blood because if they just saw you, the enemy would have his way. But because he sees the... Over the heart, the circumcision of our heart, he says, I got to back up. Don't make me preach. Do y'all understand? You are under a blood covenant. I got to hurry. So every first Sunday, that's why I implore you, I beg you, please don't miss a first Sunday because it reminds you of that is over your life. Can I get a witness? It reminds you of I'm in the covenant with Jesus. The lamb, the lamb in the Old Testament, then in the New Testament, Jesus is that lamb without spot or wrinkle. The Bible says everything we do is as filthy rags. But because of the grace of God and the mercy of God, he looks beyond the filthiness and says, I see blood. I see blood. I see, I see covering. But... So this morning, your family, you need to realize that that's the, 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 the blood is so strong. I was riding in my car. The Lord just put it in my heart. I was just thinking about her, my daughter. And I was just saying, God, help me get things together. Then this scripture popped up. My flesh tried to take me one way. Wanted to cause me to worry. But then the Holy Spirit kicked in. Kicked over a word. As I was driving, I almost had to pull off the road. Because the Bible tells me, never seen the righteous forsaken. nor your children, nor your children's children. That's what seed means. Never ever seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. Children, children, grandchildren, great, great never seen them forsaken, nor breaking bread. Because this institution of family is so important to God that he says, I'm not going to violate it with you. And because I love you so much, I'm going to put them under the covenant. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that they are taken care of. Can I get a witness in the house? Stop worrying about bad kids. Get them under the blood. Amen, somebody. So stop worrying about children that go wayward. If you train them up right, they said, the Bible says he got, he's married to them. He, he won't let them go. Amen, somebody? God's going to take care of him because why? We're under covenant with him. This family institution, this divine institution is so important to God that before we ever instituted and was thanking God in communion in the church, the very first communion was in a house, in the houses of all the people. So when we were sequestered at home during the pandemic and we said make sure you have your elements, it should not have been strange to you because you should recognize that the first, you see it here, when you read chapter 12, that they were in houses having communion together. 
This should not be foreign to you this morning. What do you mean by this family community? It's right here laid out for us. And then when we get over to the New Testament, and it starts telling us about Jesus telling the disciples to go and get the Passover prepared. It's been going on for centuries. And now, he says, it's going to come to the church, to the body of Christ, that we get together and do it together as a family. We should have understood that, that God was referencing what he did in the first chapter 12 of Exodus. Now he's bringing it up, updating it for us in the New Testament, that we are under the blood. The same covenant and the same blessings that came upon the Israelites because of their covenant connection with God is now with us. That's why he tells Abraham, Abraham, look up. Abraham, look down. As plentiful as the stars and as numerous as the sand, so shall your descendants be. You and I are spiritually one of those descendants because of what? The blood. So when we take communion this morning in your family unit, I want you to think about this. Every family has an assignment. Every family is a unit designed by God. There's something you should be doing specifically in your life, in your family's lives, that should bring you together. So this morning, I want you to realize that as you take communion in your family, if you don't know the direction, say, God, give me the direction. If you know the direction, God, help us with the direction. Bring us the blessings. Let the blessings come upon us that you have designed for us so that we may live in agreement with your with what you have ordained in heaven for this unit. I know, as I look across this audience, these people, they get on our nerves sometimes. Did y'all catch what I just said and did? They, they, they can work our nerves. And sometimes, especially in our family. Amen? God gave you that family. Be thankful for the family. One of the things you do when you take communion, in spite of everything, ask God to help you to have forgiveness in your family. Ask God to help you to have forgiveness for that person, that one that's in that unit. Because you know some things happened in 2023. Okay in 2022 okay in 2021 19 <laughs> some of y'all say ever since I got married to that joke <laughs> some of us can't move forward today because we missed the moment, the shifting that should have taken place, but we missed it. Have forgiveness this moment in this morning when you have family communion. And can I just say this to you? Stop bringing it up. Stop. I call it cyclical thinking. That every time you turn around, you remember when. Get rid of your you remember when spirit. Stop doing what God says he would never do to us. He said, I will throw your sins. Where's East? Wherever East is. As far as the East is from the West. <laughs> Sometimes we need to have our own. 
Okay, if your arm if your arm ain't that strong. He says, I'll put him in the sea of forgetfulness. We need to learn to forgive and to stop bringing it up. Stop rehearsing. Stop living in Egypt and having somebody else want to live in Egypt because you didn't get over your issues. Ask God this morning to break that. To break those things that continue to cause you harm. Bad thoughts. Y'all ain't never had a. Y'all ain't never. Right down to the white meat. Y'all ain't never. If I could shoot you and get away with it, I would. We have those kind of moments. Make sure they are fleeting. Make sure they're just a moment. Ask God for forgiveness. What he has given to you, give to somebody else, and especially in your family. Number one, ask God for the blessing, for, I mean, for direction. God, now what is this family supposed to be doing? Number two, ask God for forgiveness. When you get forgiveness and you're living clear, God, send the blessings upon this family. all the things that you want to happen for us because sometimes your blessings are caught up and hung up because you are caught up and hung up. If you learn to release stuff, stop bringing it up, stop reliving it, stop living in Egypt and say, I've been delivered. Amen? When we have communion this morning. Get in your family circle, the nucleus. Remind yourself of those things, and I don't know what else you're going to pray about, but spend a few moments in prayer. And this morning, if you are here and you are single, you can come join me. We don't want anybody to be without family. We're all a part of God's family. Tell your neighbor, say, we're all a part of the family. We're all a part of the family.